Princeton and Rutgers, 100 years ago, a beginning. College football today, it's a different game. Introducing the Coaches All-America team, the president of the Coaches Association, South Carolina's Paul Dietzel. For each game we play, we receive three of our opponent's game film in advance. In this way, we see players in game action from four different schools. We play a 10-game schedule, so we see better than 40 different teams during the season. And there's a lot of cross-checking, too. For example, one of the game films might involve our opponent in Southern California. Now, we don't play Southern California, but we see them in the film. This happens frequently. So when you figure that there are some 1,000 coaches who are doing this and casting their ballots for the All-American team, a lot of coaches have seen the same boys in action. It's always hard to make a selection. There are so many good ones. It was a great year for offense, a year for moving the ball, a year for putting points on the scoreboard, and the quarterbacks made it happen. Men like Archie Manning of Ole Miss, Ohio State's Rex Kern, and the brilliant sophomore from Florida, John Reeves. The best of them all, Purdue's senior quarterback, Mike Phipps, the Big Ten's all-time total offense leader. Mike Phipps realizes that picking an All-America quarterback is a tough job. There's many players that are capable of winning. To single out one is a great honor, but you're leaving a lot of players behind and deserves the honor too. But it's a goal that it, many players uh, would like to have, but they don't like to think about. Football is a team performance, not an individual performance, and to get involved with your own desires might affect your performance, and uh, you won't give your, your fellow players a fair shake. You're not playing for them, you're playing for yourself, and I think this can hurt your performance and, uh, and show the team. It's really more than an individual thing, I think. Mike Phipps, working with an inexperienced team, led the Boilermakers to a third place finish in the tough Big Ten Conference. He's the only quarterback ever to beat a Notre Dame team three consecutive years. He set Purdue's all-time passing and total offense records. In a vintage year for quarterbacks, Mike Phipps was truly an All-America. When you take that ball, you become a target. A target for 11 mobile, agile, and hostile young men with one purpose in mind.
biggest members of the 1969 Coaches All-American team are the men up front. In modern football, Notre Dame consistently produces All-Americans. This year, their 275-pound tackle Mike McCoy of Erie, Pennsylvania, anchors the defensive line. Off the field, like all college football players, Mike takes time to chat with fans. But on the field, he's all business. Notre Dame's Ara Parsegian says that Mike McCoy, number 77, is the hardest working big man he's ever coached. Not only does he make the big play on the line, Mike McCoy has the quickness to intercept a pass, the kind of quick reacting versatility that makes an All-American lineman. The team's middle guard is Jim Stillwagon, a 216-pound junior whose short tackling helped keep Ohio State tops in the country most of the season. Number 68 spent a lot of time in the enemy's backfield. Senior Jim Gunn led Southern California's Wild Bunch, the defensive crew that helped put the Trojans into the Rose Bowl. With his lightning speed, no wonder they call Jim the fastest gun in the West. Another outstanding pass rusher on the defensive line, UCLA's Floyd Reese. Tough game, tough game. The key to becoming an All-American defensive lineman is talent and practice. Who blocked the line? At Penn State, when defensive tackle Mike Reed practices, it's not always on the football field. people have tried to put down the violence and serenity found in football on paper in the form of, a, of short stories and in the form of uh, poetry. I would like to do the same thing, to write down uh, a symphony or a piece of music to represent really what football means to me and I'm sure means to a lot of other fellows. Steve Kiner heads up the linebacking core. Against Alabama, Kiner, number 57, had a typical All-American day. Dropped the passer five times, caused a fumble, and intercepted a pass. This kind of effort from Kiner helped Tennessee to the co-championship of the Southeastern Conference and a trip to the Gator Bowl. A former All-State High School quarterback, Cliff Powell, called the defensive signals for Arkansas. Powell, number 64, topped the Razorbacks in unassisted tackles on a team that topped the nation in defense against the rush.
The ability to follow a play and stick with a tackle made Cliff Powell a linebacker to be feared. The same kind of hard-nosed play made UCLA's Mike the Cat Baloo. And LSU's George Bevan tops at their linebacking spots on the 1969 All-America team. To complete the All-American defensive team, let's move on to the defensive backs. Here are the boys who have the strength and the mobility to be fine offensive players. But they've made defense their specialty. And defense is a specialty, particularly pass defense. Bingo! All right, here we go. Move it up. Come on, Steve. Bingo! All right, get up there. Pass! One mistake, you give up six points. <laughs> Buddy McClinton, a defensive halfback from Auburn, specialized in making the big plays. He does all the things a defensive halfback should do. McClinton led his team in interceptions and made over 20 game-saving tackles. Auburn coach Shug Jordan says that Buddy McClinton is the best defensive back he's ever had. Mississippi is equally proud of its outstanding defensive back, Glenn Cannon. Time on a college campus means different things to different people. To coach Woody Hayes, it's the beginning of a long season. Go, go, go! That's what it should be right there. You're not getting your yardage, and we're coming up third and five. We're lucky we got by that time. But you just get that first down and we'll get the touchdown. Break. Go, stay, stay. A player that Woody could look to with confidence was his second year defensive back, Jack Tatum. Tatum did not disappoint him. Keep your feet moving. Drive, drive, drive. Keep your feet moving. Keep your feet moving. Hut. Okay, moving your feet. Hard. Up, up, move them. Drive, drive. Three. He's a splendid tackler. He's an excellent interceptor. He'll make plays that not another corner man in the country will make. Jack Tatum could probably be a starting halfback for us, or maybe even a starting fullback. But, uh, well, you take uh, Southern Cal, who's a great team against us, number two in the nation. And yet against us, they did not run O.J. Simpson against Tatum. They ran away from Tatum all day. And they were running into the sideline because Tatum is the open side of the field. Now, I'm not in any way taking anything against uh, O.J. Simpson because he's the best back we ever met. He's the best one. And that's, uh, we've met a lot of great ones. And, and he's a great youngster, too, off the field. We were very impressed with him. But still, doggone it, he couldn't make a living running at Jack Tatum. And we don't think anybody else can. No, no, no. <laughs> ball up, you're hitting the wrong I think the way you get the best out of a football player is to tell him and everyone else how good he is, then make him live up to it. There it is, good shot. All right, that's it. That's what we want it right there. That's exactly what we want, right there. And you throw it bing right now. Faster than most offensive backs, Tatum is a vicious tackler. At six feet and 204 pounds, he was the leader of a rugged defense that allowed opponents little more than one touchdown a game. Ohio State's Jack Tatum symbolizes the drive and determination of the 1969 All-American defensive team. College football. It's more than all Americans. It's a Saturday afternoon way of life.
1969 feature the most exciting scoring explosion since college football's first game 100 years ago. Quarterbacks throwing the ball more than ever, receivers became a prime reason for the scoring parade. Jim Mandich, Michigan's big tight end, caught his share, enough to rank him just behind the Wolverines' great Jack Clancy in total passes caught and yards gained. Mandich was tops as a blocker and a pass receiver, and he knew what to do with the ball when he caught it. Jim Mandich, he helped power the Wolverines into the Rose Bowl. In the Southwest, Chuck Dykus is another high school quarterback who switched positions and made it pay off. Smallest man on the 1969 All-America team at 172 pounds, Chuck is the leading pass catcher in Arkansas history. of Garland, Texas, the six-foot junior recovered from knee surgery and went on to become one of the most important parts of the Arkansas attack. on the team is Carlos Alvarez, the only sophomore to break into the All-America lineup. He did it by catching 88 passes for more than 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns. Teamed with sophomore quarterback John Reeves, the pair gave Florida the nation's top passing combination. Alvarez, a Cuban refugee, earned the nickname El Gato, the cat. The boys that make a team move, the offensive line. The line is big, average on the order of 240 pounds. Good offensive line play kicks off in spring practice. And this is where the lineman sets his sights on success. Where you going, buddy? Right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. All right. He's coming out your mouth, then. Oh, okay, do? let's go, Kenny. There it is, right there. Go! Too high. Too high. Let's go! That's good, Otter. That's good. That's good. Get up, Bigger. Somebody hit him, Bigger. The hard work paid off for men like Texas U's Bobby Wunsch, a 6'3", 225-pound junior from Houston. It paid off for Texas, too, as the Longhorns led the nation in rushing. Bobby Wunsch opened the holes and led the way downfield for his ball-carrying teammates. Equally effective in clearing out the defense was Notre Dame's Jim Riley. John Ward of Oklahoma State was a rare two-way player, but he made the coaches All-America team for his offensive blocking ability. Ward, number 72 from Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a vicious blocker 
He also used his strength and agility to become a two-time Big 8 wrestling champion. When linemen like John Ward make a block that springs a back for a touchdown, the fans may not see it, but his teammates do. High-scoring Houston counts on Bill Bridges. Just as Tennessee relies on Chip Kell, it's the offensive line that makes the ball carrier go. To round out the offensive team, we have three fine backs. All three of these boys are tops, and we took a long time to narrow the field down to these three. The field included some of the hardest running backs ever to perform in a single season. Southern California had its Clarence Davis. Colorado, Bob Anderson. Texas, Steve Wooster. The Ivy League had Ed Marinaro. And Ohio State, its pile-driving fullback, Jim Otis. In a record-setting season where 12 backs ran for more than a thousand yards each, three backs stood out and earned coaches All-American honors. One of them was Penn State's Charlie Pittman. I say I run by instinct. Actually, I tell a lot of people that uh, I'm afraid to be hit. That's why I try my best to avoid tackles at all times. what you say, body movement when my running. I do a lot to set up my block, and I think this is the key. Your lineman can only do so much without your help. Running is not just running, it's thinking and running at the same time. In the three years that Charlie Pittman was a starting halfback, Penn State lost only two regular season games. Charlie Pittman had an idol, Lenny Moore, the former Baltimore Colts star. Charlie broke his Penn State scoring record, a true All-American performance. Warren Muir of South Carolina personifies the kind of extra effort and year-round dedication that makes a good running back great. A native of Fitchburg, Massachusetts, Muir stands 5'10", weighs 197 pounds, and has built up the endurance to move the ball against some of the strongest defenses in the country. It's the fullback's job to get the short yardage, the tough yardage through the middle against a stacked defense. Warren Muir drove for touchdowns when his team really needed them and led South Carolina to the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Homecoming day at Oklahoma and thousands of alumni make the trip to the Norman campus to get a good look at the country's top football players. But first, some pre-game festivities. <laughs> Oklahoma's great running back and 1969 Heisman Trophy winner, Steve Owens, doesn't spend all his time on the football field running for daylight. He takes the time to pass on some tips to other guys on the way up. How long have you guys been playing football? Oh, this is our second year. You know, I started playing football when I was about your age, and uh, I'll tell you, it was a very rewarding experience being able to start that young. I've always learned that uh, if you practice hard and uh, in a game you'll be able to, to do the things automatic, you won't have to worry about it. And you learn a lot of other things, like, for instance, carrying the ball. Throw me the ball, Jeff. When you're 
carrying the ball, you know, this is the most important thing you have. Uh, if you lose it, you give it to the other team and they have a chance to, to go and score. When you carry the ball, you should always protect it at all times. For instance, I run through the line a lot and uh, when I run through the heavy tra traffic, I try to keep both hands on the ball and cover it up. This is very important. And you learn this through practice and uh, if you learn it in practice and in a game, you don't have to worry about it. You can go ahead and run with the ball. You don't have to worry really about losing the ball if you always protect it. This is a very important thing. I uh, was out for track when I was in high school and uh, I was a hurdler and this hurdling has really helped me uh, while I've been playing uh, instances uh, where the hole might be closed and uh, you have to hurl them. So this has really helped me a lot. After a while, they all become instincts. You don't really worry about them. Like for instance, when I go into a football game, I don't worry about uh, how I'm going to carry the ball or uh, which way I'm going to cut or things like this. This is all instinct to me and uh, I've learned this through practice, uh, hard practice. If you work hard during practice, you don't have to worry about the game because you're prepared to go and play. And Steve Owens played so well that he scored 56 touchdowns and ran for over 3,800 yards. Both are new NCAA three-year records. Steve Owens ran for more yards and scored more touchdowns than anybody in the first 100 years of college football. Well, that's it. The 1969 All-American team, selected by the men who know them best, my fellow coaches from all over the country. These boys are good. They're the best. And the proof is right here on this film. <laughs>